happy birthday <laughs> to the man behind the camera. He does a lot of amazing stuff for us and for you, all you watching. So wish him a happy birthday. His name is Nate. He's gonna edit this. We'll see if he keeps it in. <laughs> The intention today was to trial a few uh, workouts that are gonna be coming up in 2023 in the Persist Perform and Pump programs. So putting a lot of intention into building out the training programs for the entire year ahead. Only going about six to 12 weeks ahead at a time, giving us plenty of opportunity to test myself, my staff, a handful of people that we've selected who have volunteered to test ahead of our group training program to give us feedback, make sure the program's really working for everybody. So this is a process we've been in for the past four months, uh, six months really of testing and really getting ahead and we're getting so refined in the process thanks to a lot of people's effort and thanks to doing workouts like today <laughs> where something was on the, on the paper, on the whiteboard, I did it, and as much as I wanted to change it in the middle because it was feeling aggressive, I just stuck it out. And uh, now that I've actually put forth the effort, I will go back and make any edits that I think are necessary. So if you're a coach out there, this is a message to you. Do the stuff that you write at least once, ideally for like multiple mesocycles or cycles of training. You don't have to be an endurance runner to effectively program strength training for an endurance athlete, but you should experience it at some point and start to really understand what that means for that person that you're writing programs for. Same thing goes for all the coaches at Functional Bodybuilding. Tell them, hey, if you're writing a program, you better know what it feels like inside of every cell of your body. That's the only way you can effectively put yourself in the shoes of a customer and give them something that is effective and really a appropriate to their level. So coaches, do your stuff, try it at least. Today I did, like I said, a combination of some perform elements, which is our functional bodybuilding training track that is more of a slant towards functional fitness or CrossFit for those of you who know it. Um, you saw me doing like kipping toes to bar today, dumbbell snatches, high speed rowing, those would be things that you see showing up in our performance track, perform track. We always balance that with some bodybuilding, hypertrophy work, stability, joint stability, uh, range of motion work, but there's a slant towards that performance. Then on the other side of the coin, we have the pump track, which is, as it states, getting a pump, chasing hypertrophy training stimulus more so than performance. So in that training track, you see me building up to tough sets, higher reps, six to eight, eight to 10, doing some back off sets today, AMRAPs for some added hypertrophy work, me doing some isolation sets at high rep. I did meadow rows at 20 reps per side. I did 20 strict dips. You know, these rep ranges that get up there higher, definitely good for time under tension, good for hypertrophy, letting us work at lower percentages of our maximum so that we can be a little safer um, as we try to push the tension on the muscles for them to stimulate grow. And the pump track has really been terrific for people who are looking to heal from a lot of intense functional fitness training and they need to slow down. People that want to lose body fat, but they want to retain muscle, which is what most people are chasing when they look for weight loss is keep your muscles, lose your body fat, truly change your shape. Pump has been great for that. So I'm, again, trying out a couple different formats to go through them from start to finish. Did a hot start, which was a sprint into a push into a dumbbell snatch. So 15 second sprint on the rowing machine, trying to get my 
cadence as high as possible, as much power as I could. Then go into eight banded push-ups because I was gonna be doing bench press, so I wanted to get my shoulders prepped. And then a snatch, a dumbbell snatch, because there was gonna be some hinging on the rowing machine today. Also just something that works on shoulder turnover. That was really as simple as that. So it was work, rest, work, rest, five, five rounds. <laughs> Then I jumped into, there were two strength movements, intensity strength movements for today. Sometimes I'll superset them in pump, sometimes we'll separate them. Today I separated them, worked up to a heavy set of six in the dumbbell bench, backed off to 80% and then did an AMRAP. I did the same format for the T-bar row, built up to a heavy set of eight, backed off to 80%, did an AMRAP. So I got through those, get a bit of intensity to work on maximal strength, but in those higher rep ranges and then also back off sets for hypertrophy, a little bit more, uh, time under tension in the muscle group. And then for some we'll call it accessory or strength balance, picked a couple other movements that I could do for higher reps, focus on a specific area of the body, a joint. The dips are great for triceps. Meadow row, I find to just be a really comfortable position, something I can put a lot of energy and effort into, developing the rear delts and the upper back rhomboids. So I just did two sets of each of those exercises for 20 reps. I've been vibing with the Ain't no silence, that's the move. If you kill it, I'm And then did the conditioning workout, which will be coming to perform. Again, more of a performance conditioning uh, segment, which was higher heart rate, higher intensity. It was a 90 second AMRAP. The buy-in was 20 calories for men on the rowing machine. And then in the remainder of 90 seconds, I was either doing max set of push-ups on the parallettes, or I was doing a max set of toes to bar. And then I would just tally up those reps. So 90 seconds on, a minute rest. And we went through each four times. So it was row, push-up, rest. Row, toes to bar, rest. Repeat, repeat, repeat. And things got extremely spicy. <laughs> um, but. One of the things that we really try and teach in the performance track is the ability to pace and really create s sustainable or consistent levels of power, right? I could have gone, my repetitions, for example, on the push-ups were anywhere from 22 to 24 reps per set. On the first set, I could have probably knocked out 35, but subsequent sets would have been in the 20, low 20s, then in the, in the teens and possibly even reaching some failure point. So if I come out too fast at the beginning, I die out at the end, and the total amount of work that I do is just not that uh, substantial. Whereas if I kind of pace my first round, but then maintain that throughout, the, over, the overall amount of work that I do is much higher than the first example. This is not something that's easy to do, it just takes practice, but we introduce conditioning formats in our program that allow you to learn pacing. Pacing, why do you even care about pacing? Because Cardio training is super important to your health, your wellness, and one of the biggest reasons why people hate cardio is because they don't know how to pace it. They just know how to go fast and then suffer, and then they're like, man, this is just so painful. The other side of the coin is people who just never really do much interesting stuff with their cardio. They just walk on a treadmill and they're like, it's boring. So you got your boring crew and you got your, man, this is just so painful. It's, so, it's such a suffer fest every time I hate it. It doesn't have to be that way. You can do something like what I did today, which definitely adds an element of variety and fun, entertainment, and just general like fulfillment from cardio, right? Cause you're doing different stuff. You're rowing, you're doing push-ups, you're doing some core, you're kind of mixing it up. It's not just treadmill. You're not just staring at CNN news, whichever on at the, at the gym. But if you don't know how to pace and you push too hard, man, you, you're like, man, I hate this interval stuff, this rowing and this, it just sucks, it's just so hard, it makes me wanna throw up, it makes me feel like a zombie afterwards. So here I am, I just did a hard workout, I'm talking about how challenging it was, but I'm with it, you know, I'm, I've recovered in about less than 10 minutes, I'm ready to tackle my day, I'm talking to you right now. So pacing, learning how to pace, this is like one of the best things that I can offer you uh, is, a, is a roadmap and a tool in our program to learn how to do that well so you can love cardio and do it effectively for life and be a great functional fitness athlete if that's what you choose to be. And if not, 
just know how to do cardio in a way that's gonna be fun and sustainable for a long time. So long-winded, but that's how we got our fitness in today. That's how I tested out the Persist training program. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop me a comment below. If you've got a question, please drop me a comment below. And if you hated this video and you made it this far, then comment below. I'll give you a high five because it's a long time to listen for a video you didn't like. All right. Have a good day.